This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Check out the link in the description or stay tuned to learn more. When people think about European high-speed rail, their minds have traditionally gone to France or perhaps Spain or even Germany, but perhaps the most underappreciated high-speed rail success story of the last several decades is actually in Italy, a nation not just of fast cars, but also fast trains. Italy is one of the world's railway construction leaders, and in recent decades has built a lot of high-speed rail and just rail in general. What's even more interesting is that Italy was once the leader in high-speed rail thinking, but sort of fell off the tracks in the late 20th century, only to come roaring back as one of Europe's and indeed the world's high-speed rail champions. This along with numerous high-speed rail innovations makes Italy one of the preeminent high-speed rail nations, up there with the likes of Japan, so let's dive in and talk about some fast red trains. Hey there, my name is Reese, and this is RM Transit, a channel where I talk about public transport and the path to a greener future for the world. This year I'm making videos about high speed rail systems all around the world, so if you live near a high speed rail line in France, Germany, the UK, or Taiwan, send us an email and perhaps your photos and videos can appear in a future explainer. Italy is a country of roughly 60 million people in southern Europe, surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea. To the country's north is Switzerland, and to the west is southern France. The largest cities in the country, Rome, Milan, Turin, and Naples, form a very nice arc that just screams high-speed rail. And better yet, filling in the gap between north and south are Florence and Bologna, with Venice on the northeastern coast. It's also worth mentioning that despite its far from central location, Milan increasingly feels like a major center of gravity for the country, given its location in the highly prosperous north. And better yet, we have a Transit Explained video on the city and its growing metro network that you can check out after this video. Despite the very nice placement of cities across Italy for high-speed rail, the country's geography presents a lot of challenges. Italy is covered in mountains and large valleys, and as in Japan, there's also a significant risk of earthquakes in a number of areas. As I mentioned before, Italy was one of the first countries to dabble in high-speed rail. In the early 20th century, Italy created the precursor to modern high-speed rail with new lines between Florence and Bologna and Rome and Naples with the geometry necessary for high-speed operations. These lines, like most electrified main lines in Italy, were electrified at 3000 volts DC, which actually requires two catenary wires. It's in these lines that you can start to see the emergence of incredible railway building prowess in Italy, in the form of a 19 km base tunnel on the Florence to Bologna line, which was at the time the longest high capacity rail tunnel in the world, and is still in the world's top 20 longest rail tunnel. Deployed on these lines was one of the first trains that could ever be reasonably called high speed, the ETR 200 developed by the company which would become Unsaldo Breda. The ETR 200 naturally had a design speed of 200 km per hour, though it operated at only 160 km per hour in revenue service. Despite being introduced in the mid-1930s, the ETR 200 featured many design and engineering features that are common in modern high-speed trains. They were multiple units, featured Jacob's bogies, and looked sleek, at least for their time. Unfortunately, despite these great innovations, it wouldn't be until 40 years later that Italy took the next leap forward in its journey towards national high-speed rail. This would come in the form of the Diritissima, the name previously given to the routes between Florence and Bologna and Rome and Naples, which literally means the most direct route. When the route opened in 1977, it increased train speeds between Rome and Florence to 250 km per hour, around the highest speed allowable under the 3000 volt DC electrification scheme although at that time no trains were capable of running at that speed, thus making it the first modern high-speed rail route in Europe. Following the opening of the Rome to Florence route, there was a major lull in high-speed rail construction and line openings, but in the 2000s new lines came fast and furious, with the Rome to Naples route starting to open in 2005 and introducing 25 kV AC overhead electrification and 300 km per hour operations to the network for the first time enabled by the first ever deployment of ETCS Level 2. You can learn more about ETCS in our signaling video. Following this, many new lines opened in the 2000s, including new 300 km per hour lines which connected Florence to Bologna and Bologna up to Milan, allowing trips between Milan and Naples in under 4 hours. A new high-speed line from Naples south to Salerno, electrified at 3000 volts DC, allowing a top speed of 250 km per hour also opened creating a very long high-speed spine through the country. 
Even better, as it turns out, the Florence to Rome corridor may actually be able to get faster in the future when it fully moves to ETCS signaling to allow speeds of up to 270 km per hour or even 300 km per hour in some sections, as its geometry actually allows this. As it turns out, the Italian high-speed rail network actually looks much more like a T than an I though, because there are also high-speed lines radiating from Milan, which essentially forms the core of Italy's high-speed network. From Milan, you can go west to Turin or east to Brescia and beyond to Venice. The sections of Milan to Brescia and Padua to Venice are designed for 300 km per hour operation and the 25 kV AC electrification that makes this possible, but because the distance from Milan to Venice isn't very long and there are a lot of valuable potential stops for important cities en route, speeds are currently lower and electrification is at 3000 volts DC to enable faster regional services. This reminds me a bit of the high speed rail situation in the Netherlands with the HSL Zoud. All of these high-speed lines are very impressive, and while many current and future lines do run along the autostrada or the highways, there's also a massive amount of complex engineering in the form of bridges and tunnels on the high-speed rail network. And interestingly, some of the time, this is in urban areas. In 2013, a new 10 km city center high-speed rail tunnel in Bologna was opened, which allowed trains to more quickly pass through the city. Another urban tunnel like this is planned for Florence, with a station designed by Foster and Partners and a new alignment that will allow through running of high-speed trains, as opposed to the current layout that requires reversing out of Florence Santa Maria Novella station. Speaking of star architecture, the Italian high-speed rail network has it in spades. Reggio Emilia station was designed by Santiago Calatrava. Naples' new bypass station is by Zaha Hadid, and the upgraded for through-running Tiburtina station in Rome was designed by Paolo Desideri. I quite like the boldness of these stations, which not only reflects the powerful service unlocked by high-speed trains, but also the ultra-modern trains themselves. And speaking of trains, Italy has a broad variety of them on its high-speed network, but perhaps the most interesting is the ETR 1000, which was designed by Bombardier and Ansaldo Breda to hit maximum speeds of up to 400 km per hour, the highest in the world. However, no track in Italy is certified for revenue service above 300 km per hour, and plans to increase speeds have been stalled. Experience from China and Japan seems to suggest that speeds far above 300 km per hour tend to lead to lots of additional train and track wear that just isn't necessary unless you really need those speeds for competitive travel times, which Italy generally does not. There's also the very cool looking AGV 575, which is an EMU like the ETR 1000 and is actually Alstom's EMU high speed train model, capable of top speeds of up to 360 km per hour. Interestingly, it was Italy rather than France to use the French manufacturer's first high speed EMU, while high speed trains in France all use locomotives and trailer cars, albeit with some additional powered bogies. Now, what you might notice is that the branding on the ETR is different from the AGV. That's because Italy actually has the world's first private open access high speed rail company, NTV, founded by a former chairman of Ferrari, whose Italo high speed trains compete with Trenitalia, which is Italy's national railway company and of course has its own high speed rail services. This has led to lower, more accessible fares and more services, and in turn has caused ridership to increase massively, with an over 5x increase since 2008. What's more interesting is that a significant portion of ridership growth has actually been picked up by NTV, whose trains now make up a significant portion of the high-speed rail market, moving nearly 20 million passengers per year. There are of course additional services operated besides the highest speed trains as well. Historically, Italy's difficult geography led to a lot of curvy lines that were difficult to speed up. The introduction of tilting trains, known as pendolinos, a technology Italy took a great effort to develop, allowed services on many routes such as the legacy Rome to Milan line to have increased speeds by increasing passenger comfort rounding corners at high speed. Interestingly though, the fastest trains in Italy mentioned above do not tilt, and Italo actually employs pendolino line ETR675 trains that are unique looking but don't actually tilt. What's fascinating is that the Pendolino train line, which was acquired from Fiat by Alstom, has been a pretty significant export success, with sales to the UK, China, Poland, and Spain, albeit with some of the trains not actually featuring the tilting functionality and all trains having a sub 300 km per hour top speed. Of course, different train types are run on different levels of service, with the 300 km per hour class ETR 1000, the 250 km per hour class ETR 600 and ETR 700, and the locomotive pulled ETR 500 operating as Freccia Rossa, or Red Arrow, 
the 250 km per hour class ETR485 trains operate as Freccia Argento or Silver Arrow. The ETR610 trains, which operate between Milan and Switzerland, do have the silver livery of the Freccia Argento, but they're branded instead as Euro City. And the lower speed still services, such as those operating along the Adriatic coast, are known as Freccia Bianca, or White Arrow. The latter two types of service are critical because they serve areas not currently on the high-speed network, such as Reggio Calabria, as well as parts of northern Italy, while Freccia Rossa services mostly stay on the high-speed corridors. It's worth noting that the ETR 700 are actually the trains that likely pushed Ansaldo Breda over the edge, as their catastrophic 39-day deployment in the Netherlands for a short-lived high-speed rail service was full of issues. You can hear more about this in my previous Benelux high-speed rail video. However, after work was done to properly certify the trains, they now operate some services in Italy, though I'm not sure I'd want to ride on them. And if you're curious, a lot of Ansaldo Breda's work lives on as part of Hitachi Rail Italy. Beyond just domestic train services, high-speed trains also cross international porters into and out of Italy. As I mentioned before, there are a number of daily Eurocity services to Zurich in Switzerland, as well as Freccia Rossa services to Lyon in France. Now, if you feel bad that Trenitalia has to compete domestically, well, don't, because they actually compete in other countries themselves. As discussed in my Spanish high-speed rail video, Trenitalia's Irio operates services in Spain with a fleet of modified ETR 1000 trains. Now, fortunately, there's also going to be lots of new high-speed rail coming online within Italy to keep the network and passenger numbers growing for decades into the future. A roughly triangular route is being built between Genoa, Milan, and Turin, with planning underway on the legs from Turin and Milan to the common line into Genoa. Meanwhile, in the country's southeast, the existing Naples to Bari rail line is being upgraded for high-speed rail across the country, and it's just the first of a number of planned high-speed rail routes into southern Italy, which also include a route from Salerno to Reggio Calabria, which may someday be extended to Sicily, where railway upgrades are ongoing. The full Milan to Venice high speed line is also coming along well, and when completed it will offer much needed additional speed and capacity throughout the country's north. You see, there are two massive new international rail projects being built right now that will better connect Europe's railway networks, and these two projects are some of the largest not just in Europe, but in the world. And of course, both impact Italy directly. The first is the Lyon to Turin railway which will join the French and Italian high-speed rail networks with tracks through the mountains capable of over 200 km per hour, enabling trains to travel from Milan to Paris in as little as 4 hours. The new railway will be nearly 300 km long and will include a nearly 60 km long base tunnel which will just barely surpass the Gotthard base tunnel in Switzerland as the world's longest. There's also the enhanced corridor from Verona between Milan and Venice to Munich via Innsbruck, Austria. This route includes the Brenner Base Tunnel, which is also over 50 km long, and will eventually allow relatively high-speed travel from Berlin all the way into Italy. Both of these projects are massively expensive, controversial, and won't be completed until well into the 2030s. But they will allow much faster passenger train trips between France, Germany, and Italy, all while allowing freight volumes to grow significantly thanks to gentler grades and curves. Both projects have design speeds of around 250 km per hour, though operating speeds will be a little lower, as with these similar services through the Gotthard base tunnel. But the impact on travel and the geography of Europe will be enormous. And these projects will only further strengthen Italy's high-speed rail network, which should be a model for other countries in so many ways. From its sleek modern trains to its iconic infrastructure, affordable fares, international connections, and its urban corridors and stations that better optimize train movements. It's a system that gets so much right, which means it's hard to fault it for taking longer to emerge than some of the other networks, unlike its F1 team in recent years. If you've stayed to the end of this video, I'm sure learning is one of the things you actively enjoy doing, whether it's about Italy's high-speed rail, science and technology, or other topics. It's really easy to gain a greater understanding of the world and find the things you encounter in your daily life more interesting by doing a bit of learning every single day, and Brilliant.org can help you do just that. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, computer science, and data science interactively, and it has thousands of lessons in each of these topics, from foundational and advanced math to AI, data science, neural networks, and more, with new lessons added monthly. I have a degree in computer science, and even though I'm not obviously using it for my current career, it's still something I'm quite passionate about, because computer science teaches you how to think. 
Brilliant's visual, hands-on approach is such an effective way to learn and internalize concepts, and the way that lessons are broken down into bite-sized pieces ensures that you can gradually master topics just by spending 15 minutes on Brilliant a day. And better yet, you can even learn on the go on your phone, tablet, or computer, so you can chew on learning that complicated algorithm even on your train commute. I've been going through the Computer Science Fundamentals course from the very beginning, and Brilliant's lessons are structured and broken down quite unlike, say, your Programming 101 course from freshman year. But they grasp you with interesting problems and high-level concepts, and then they break them down into bite-sized pieces that give you the why behind fundamental concepts of computer science, such as this one on parallelism that uses a real-life example of a bakery owner's work schedule and tasking with the goal of optimizing its efficiency. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash rmtransit or click the link in the description. It's really actually a lot of fun. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription, so go to Brilliant right now and start learning. A special thanks to Dr. DeWatt, Julio, Luca, Martino, and Super Saturated Spherical Solid for their footage and local expertise that helped me make this video.